Ludwig Johander or Ludwig Johanda asks, I'm interested in how your background in philosophy intersects with your interest in fantasy fiction. What's your preferred approach to magic in terms of world building, considering aspects such as metaphysics and logic? First of all, this is a topic that I think I could talk about for days, probably not just to a camera, but I would love to talk about these sorts of questions with friends. Well, I used to work, I worked in a candy store for a few years. I was the, the manager, assistant manager of a candy store for three and a half years. And this was when Game of Thrones was still going on. I was reading Game, Game of Thrones and some of the my favorite conversations I've ever had were with my coworker, Ben Hoopis Cook, if anybody knows him and wants to say hi for me. We just would talk for hours and hours about A Song of Ice and Fire and Game of Thrones and the magic. And anyway, to answer your question, my background in philosophy doesn't actually connect at all to my thoughts about magic. It does connect to my fiction writing, though, because I do, or questions about, let's say, morality do come up. Uh, morality, free, I, I mean, yeah, morality, free will, these things do come up in, in my fiction writing. But also, as far as logic goes, I mean, I wouldn't want someone to be able to conjure up a square circle or something like that, that would uh, just... I guess I don't want my magic to involve logical contradictions, but otherwise m metaphysics and logic don't play any role in my fiction writing. Now, okay. As a next question is as a reader, do you prefer narratives that explicate the mechanics of magic or those that maintain an element of mystery and unexplained wonder? I don't think that I have a preference what matters is that it is done well. And there are examples of both cases. And the two that come to mind are, I'm going to leave. So Harry Potter, the Harry Potter series, I think is my, my favorite series of all time. Partially because of nostalgia value. Uh, but I also just love reading them. That being said, I don't think that it's the best fantasy series because I think there are some serious flaws in the execution, even though I think J.K. Rowling is an, a phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal author. But the two examples I'm going to give are the Malazan Book of the Fallen, which is this massive, I would call it advanced fantasy. You need to be a serious fantasy nerd to read this series, but it's Probably there are two authors. They each have their own series and and series that butt off of their main series. It's probably the number of books is in the 20s, I'm sure. And the word count is in probably the, the five to seven million range. But their mechanic, the mechanics of their magic are very well thought out and very well explicated. I believe that the series builds off of a series of Dungeons and Dragons games that they actually played together in person. But the way that their magic system works is uh, a long, long time ago, and this is not all of it, of course, but this main god sort of cut open or he he bled out into the cosmos and his blood and and veins created these different sort of realms that have i guess a you might think of like a mag magical charge like darkness light uh, maybe chaos these sorts of things though don't don't quote me on this i haven't read these books for years and years and different people are able to tap into these these veins of magic they're called warrens and use them to do different things but anyways it's very complicated very well thought out and what i love about this style of magic is that 
in a world like this that's so huge, that has so much history, there is just so much to learn. And I always find it funny that I can get so into the world building and reading about magic systems, this sort of thing in these fantasy worlds, but I'm terrible at actual history. Then on the other hand, A Song of Ice and Fire, which I think is also absolutely terrific, is much more in the mystery and unexplained wonder camp when it comes to the magic system, because it is not explicated at all. And what I love about it so much is it really, you don't know when magic is going to pop up or what it's going to do. And when it does, it is just absolutely thrilling. So the third book, A Storm of Swords, I still remember there's a scene where I believe it's I believe it's the hound. I could be wrong, uh, but his or, or maybe it's Beric Dondarrion when he's fighting the hound. But and, and if you're not in the Song of Ice and Fire fan, this won't really mean much to you. But his sword just ignites on fire for seemingly no reason. And. This is it just like I remember my mind being blown like what just happened? Why did this happen? And so I love that sense of wonder when I get really involved in the world. But there are problems with this, too. So, for instance, in I believe it's the book two, the end of book two spoilers, uh, the red lady gives birth to like some shadow creature that do, does a bunch of or commits a bunch of assassinations, carries out a bunch of assassinations. And it just feels totally at the time because the world isn't fully fleshed out as far as it's not really full, fully fleshed out for the reader. It doesn't feel too overpowered or anything like that. And it was very exciting. But in retrospect, knowing that characters can just do this or things like this, it makes you wonder why it's not happening all of the time in A Song of Ice and Fire. And if it had happened at the So if we had never heard of these shadow assassins until the end of book seven, and these shadow assassins that, uh, I don't know, kill Daenerys or something like that, then it would be extremely frustrating that you could just... Then it would really seem like a deus ex machina. So you really run the risk of deus ex machina by pulling these sorts of tricks. But anyway, in sum, I'm a big fan of both sorts of techniques. Do, okay, then question three is, do I have a magic system that is my favorite? And I I do want to say Malazan. I love Malazan. And I, I guess I, I guess it's just my favorite. I mean, you don't want, I don't even want to say that Game of Thrones, for instance, has a magic system. There is magic, but as far as I'm aware, there's no system. Though maybe Georgie has something in the back of his mind that none of us know about yet. There's also the Kingkiller Chronicle, which has a terrific magic system. Okay. Four, what type of magic system do I prefer in fantasy world building? I'm assuming that you're asking me what... I prefer to write, and it's definitely something that is more mysterious and isn't explicated. Part of this is that I'm, as a, as a pantser, I like that if I need to, I can rely upon magic to solve problems, but I am very careful not to do it in a deus ex machina sort of way, and this goes back to keeping very copious notes about things that have to be changed in the past. So let's say just, just for instance, I have a villain or some creature. I don't know how to kill. (laughs) I will. And and then maybe I'm like, okay, the way to do this is with a magic sword. I can't just have written a million words. And then a character pulls out a magic sword to kill the, the final big bad villain. What I have to do is, if I decide upon doing it in this way, I have to go back and in edits, 
either hint that there may be a sword that exists like this or that such a sword is needed to kill this creature and then drop little clues here and there. But I like that I have this option if the magic system, if I'm not constrained by a set magic system. But again, then it's very important that you keep things consistent and you don't get overpowered like with these shadow assassins. Mm -hmm.